Hello and welcome. Today we're working on present value in Excel. This is a series we're working on on time value of money in Excel. Hello, my name's Jeff from Finally Learn, where I help you finally learn financial skills. So let's get started with time value of money, the financial functions. So we have future value is a lump sum at the end of the problem. Present value, our video today, is the lump sum at the beginning of the problem or what it's worth today. Payment is a stream of payments or annuity, could be plus or minus. And then the rate is the periodic interest rate. We work with annual rates and we convert them to periodic rates. And the last one is NPER, number of periods. I already have a video out on these five, how to work each uh, one of these five functions, and a video out on future value. And we'll have future videos on the next three. Now, a couple of things about present value versus future value. Present value and future value are opposite. So typically here in this video, I'm going to show that present value is going to be the negative number and future value is going to be the positive number. And here's the reason we say we're paying present value. We're paying $1,000 to have it grow to $3,000 in 12 years or whatever. Now, the process of going forward is called compounding. So going from present value to future value is compounding. So if the interest rate goes up, the future value goes up. The problem bringing it back to the present is a process called discounting. So that's going from the future value back to present value or today. So if the interest rate goes up, the present value gets smaller. So you can freeze this video and take notes on this if you want to, but let's keep going. Let's show you a problem. So one thing that happens is what if we just have a single amount, present value of a lump sum? We have a single amount in the future. So for example, Paula wants 100,000 in 12 years. She can earn 9% compounded quarterly. What is the amount she should invest today? So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna build everything and then build the formula to calculate present value. Now, one thing I'm using is I'm using a function called formula text. So formula text, and I'm pointing to a cell. So it's gonna show the formula in each cell uh, that we have a formula. Periods per year, since this is quarterly, we're gonna put four. And the type is gonna be, if the payments happen at the end, it's gonna be a zero. If the payments happen at the beginning of the period, it's gonna be a one. This is a um, what Excel requires us to do. So we're gonna put zero payments happen at the end of the period. The number of periods is going to be 12 years times 4, so that's quarterly, that's 48 consecutive quarters, which is 12 years. We're going to put the annual interest rate here, I'm going to put 9%, I'm going to skip the present value because that's what we're going to calculate. Paula wants 100000 a single amount, and we're not putting any payments in along the way, so I'm going to make the payment zero and the future value is going to be 100000 Now, if I enter this as positive, like I just did, the present value is going to come out to be negative, and we're okay with that. We can kind of ignore that sign, but let's show how this works for present value. So anytime I'm building a formula, a function in Excel, and I'm showing it, then I'm going to put insert function. I'm going to the FX, the very top left, and I'm going to search for present value. So the rate that I need is 9% divided by the number of periods. So I'm going to take 9% divided by 4. The number of periods. I need it to be periods, not years. And the payment is 0. The future value is 100,000. And the type, this is where it's either going to be a 0 or a 1. So it's going to be a 0. And we're going to solve for present value. So what does this mean? Now, it comes out to be negative, and we can kind of ignore that. Uh, this is a cash outflow. So if you say, I need to spend 34368 today and let it earn over 12 years at 9%, and it's going to grow to $100,000. So it's a cash outflow. That's why it's negative. If you wanted to manage this and say, look, I don't really want it to be uh, a negative number, then you could, at the very beginning of the PV, put a negative and that makes it come out to be a positive number where you know, hey, that's the present value. But I'm gonna undo 
and just keep that as a negative number and that's fine. I can ignore that, that negative number. So we know that future value is positive, present value is going to be negative. All right, the next situation is what if we have an annuity, we have a stream of payments and the payments happen at the end. Well, this is called an ordinary annuity. So let's look at this problem. Julio wants to receive $5,000 per month for 20 years from his investment account. If the account earns 7%, what amount does he need in that account to get started where it works out? So the periods per year is going to be months. So 12 is our months. We're going to have the payments at the end of the period. So that's a zero. The number of periods is going to be 20 years times 12 or 240. So I, I just calculate that. I could put another line, say years, and then have it multiply years times the 12, but this is fine. You know, you, you know, two, 20 times 12 is 240. You could type in 240. You don't have to do run the math on that. So the rate is going to be 7%. The present value is what we're trying to calculate. The payment is going to be $5,000 per month. And at the end, that account will have a zero balance. So we're going to calculate the present value just like we did before. So the present value is the rate is 7% divided by 12. Now look up here, it is going to be a little bit less than, a little bit more than half percent. So it's like 0.5%, uh, 0.58%, a little bit more than half percent per month because it's 7% for the year. The number of periods, I'm going to point to the 240. The payment is 5,000. The future value is going to be zero and the payments happen at the end of the period. So what we have is how much does Julio need in his account so he can start withdrawing $5,000. So his goal is to get to $644,912.53 or he would have to set aside that amount and then he can start withdrawing. Assuming he gets 7%, he can withdraw $5,000. At the end of 20 years, then that account would have a zero balance. So here is the formula. It's showing negative. We can force that to be positive if we want to. All right, so what if the annuity happens and the payments happen in the beginning of the period? That's called an annuity due or payments at the beginning. So let's look at Julia. Julia will receive $25,000 per quarter for 15 years beginning today. So instead of taking out $5,000 every month or $7,000 or whatever, she's taking out $25,000 every three months. So every quarter, 15 years beginning today. If the account earns 8%, what is the annuity worth today? So this is quarterly. Payments happen at the beginning, so we'll put a one here. The number of periods is going to be 15 years times quarters, four quarters. That's going to be 60. The rate, the annual rate, is going to be 8%. She's making withdrawals of 25,000. Now, I'm just putting in this as a positive number right now. She's going to, um, uh, she's going to receive 25,000, so that is a plus to her and she'll pay the present value, whatever that number is. We'll make zero the future value, and so we'll calculate the present value just like we have before. The present value is the interest rate divided by the number of periods. The number of periods is 60. The payment is 25,000. The future value is zero, and the payments happen at the beginning of the period. So that's gonna be 886,000. So if that account has 886,000, then she can withdraw 25,000 every three months, every quarter. Or that stream of payments is worth 886,000 um, at 8%. The present value of that stream of payments is 886,000. What if the interest rate goes up to 10%? Well, the present value goes down. What if the interest rate goes down to 2%? Well, the present value goes up. All right. So our last problem is let's put all these together. Let's put where we have a payment and a future value and figure out the present value. 
And a good example on this is a bond. A bond pays at the very end and it pays regular payments along the way. So let's show how this one works. Let's look at this first sentence. This first sentence says Alpha Inc. issued 300,000 of 12 year bonds. Okay, let's stop right there. So this bond is promising to pay 300,000 at the end and it's going to be 12 years so the number of periods and it's semi-annual so two periods per year so 12 times 2 what we're going to have is we're going to have 24 periods of those interest payments well 300,000 12 year bonds paid 6% semi-annually now you're tempted to put in 6% that's not correct why these bonds pay interest payments of 6%. We're going to use the 6% for the payment. I'm going to take 300,000 times 0 0.06, that's the 6%, divided by 2, that's semi-annual. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to calculate that this bond, if you buy this bond, doesn't matter what you pay for it, you're going to receive 6% times 300,000, which is 18,000, Divided by two, we're going to, you're going to receive every six months a $9,000 check, plus at the end of 12 years, you receive a $300,000 amount. So what is our real interest rate? The yield on the bond is 7.2%. So now we can calculate what is the price or present value of the bond. The payments happen at the end of the period. So let's calculate present value. Present value is going to be... The rate is 7.2% divided by 2. The number of periods is 24. The payment is 9,000. The future value is 300,000. And the payments happen at the end of the period. So this bond is would be priced approximately 271,396. 271,000. So there's a little bit of discount on this bond because this 6% bond is actually yielding 7.2. That means the price went down a little bit. All right, the last thing we're gonna do is show you how to just do this template and how to set up a template. And let's solve for one, one more problem here. So here's what I would do. I would just set this up and do it just like we did. And so if you wanna make it uh, positive, we'll show you how to do this. Let's say we have a little problem. Let's say you go to a car dealer and they say, hey, um, you can buy this car. Uh, it's going to be monthly payments. So let me put uh, months here, monthly payment, payments at the end of the period. And um, we can have you buy the car for five years times 12, 60 months. You'll make payments for 60 months. Um, we've got a 1.99% um, annual rate right now, which is a special rate. We think you can, we can get you in at 485 or 487 let's say $487 is your car payment, and it pays off the loan at zero. Uh, the final value of the loan is zero. You might want to say, well, you know, how much am I borrowing, right? Because they're kind of talking about, hey, 60 months, you got a good interest rate, $487. So on this one, you can figure out, well, how much am I borrowing? So the interest rate is 1.99% divided by 12. The number of periods is 60. The payment is 487. The future value is zero. And the type is going to be zero, with payments happen at the end of the period. So you can say, hey, um, I'm having to borrow 27,791. They might say, hey, let's look at that. Let's, let's just only look at the car payment, but they don't ever say how much you're borrowing. Okay? So here, what you could do is if you're, if you're um, taking money out of your pocket, so on this one you might say, this really is a $487 payment. So I'll make that negative. And so therefore, I'm really borrowing. I'm receiving $27,000, but I'm paying back every month $487. That's how you do present value calculations in Excel. We had four different examples plus a way to build a template that solves it all the time. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video.